Hi guys, feel free to like and subscribe if you're getting something out of this content and if you're interested in some private coaching to help with codependence, trauma, complex PTSD, or overcoming narcissistic abuse syndrome, then go to www.coachcat with a K dot O-R-G. In this video, what I'm gonna talk about is I'm gonna talk about female narcissists. And there's a lot of information out there on male narcissists, but I feel like this is a, a, often ignored because, you know, yes, statistically, there are more male, substantially more males that are actually diagnosed with the disorder of narcissistic personality disorder. Um, however, I, my opinion is it's probably um, less often diagnosed in women. I think it's becoming more of a, a awareness around it that women can absolutely be narcissists as well. And I feel like we're getting to be a much more narcissistic society. Remember, um, there's there's just a small percentage of people that actually get the diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder because a few different reasons. One. They never go to therapy, so it's very rare that they're going to get a diagnosis. If they do, it's because they usually cause some sort of criminal issue, so they're like malignant narcissists. Um, they, I also just think it's one of those things where, um, you know, the, it's underdiagnosed. That's probably the case. That's just my opinion. But I just think that they don't go to therapy, so to actually get an official diagnosis is is actually going to be fairly rare. And those would be most, I think, with malignant narcissists, sociopaths or psychopaths that break some laws or maybe um, got into therapy through because they were like, you know, their, their spouse was going to leave them or something. They typically do not go to therapy on their own, nor males or females. Um, let's talk about some of the characteristics of a female narcissist. They're going to be a lot like the male narcissist. There's going to be um, maybe a few differences, but in general, it's similar. Um, these people have a high, you know, apparent high opinion of themselves, very entitled. Um, they have an inflated sense of self-worth. They come across as perfect, but this is a cover for deep-seated insecurities. Um, they often cannot admit that there's anything wrong with them. Um, they may try to create jealousy and make you jealous if you're in a relationship with one of them. Um, she might, I'm gonna use the pronoun she, she might gaslight you. Um, she may say something, but then deny that she ever said it or deny that it happened. She'll tell you that, you know, what you, you didn't see what you saw, you didn't hear what you heard, uh, your perception is off. They really are very manipulative in that way. They tend to need to be always right. Um, they often, if they're the overts, they tip, typically will throw tantrums. The coverts will throw tantrums, but they're usually silent treatment tantrums, so they're silent. Um, if they don't get their way, then they're going to typically punish you in one way or the other. You may not even know that you're being punished, but they will get revenge. Um, they can tend to be very disloyal. Uh, they manipulate you quite often. Um, a female covert or female narcissist can be very passive aggressive and have expect you to actually read her mind. Um, they tend to, especially if they're the malignant ones, they engage in deliberate cruelty. Uh, the coverts can can be overly vulnerable. The victim, um, they just they just say like, I don't know why this is happening to me, even though they've cheated on multiple partners and you know that person was angry at them for because they cheated and lied and gaslighted. Um, but they don't understand why this is happening. Uh, deep down, you know, they feel deep unworthiness, but uh, that's underneath, you know, that's underneath this high, apparent high self-esteem. Um, they exploit others for attention, money, validation. They tend to have a real problem in long-term relationships. You'll notice these people don't have very many long-term friendships. If they do, it's usually with a codependent flying monkey that, um, isn't onto them, but they tend to burn through people. Um, they have these blow ups, you know, with people, especially if they're the overt kind, you know, they'll, they'll have these friendships where they're like madly in love with the person. This is my best friend of all time. And three months later, they're not talking to them. Um, they tend to be vain. Sometimes these people might do plastic surgery. They might wear a lot of makeup. They might dress very nice, especially if they're the somatics. Uh, the, they tend to engage in guilt trips, manipulation. Uh, these uh, female narcissists, again, are very tend to be very passive aggressive. They might withhold sex, communication, honesty, information. Everything is about them. 
They are emotional tourists. They are emotional hijackers. Uh, they do not have empathy, at least not emotional empathy. They might have some cognitive empathy where they've learned how to perform empathy, but they don't actually feel another person's pain. They love to create triangulation. They love to create jealousy, insecurity, and triangulation. They are hypersensitive to criticism, perceived or real. They absolutely cannot accept or tolerate any criticism. They tend to project their flaws onto others. All of their exes tend to be crazy or assholes, um, or they'll be best friends with all of their exes because they didn't, they don't want to let them go. And often they'll sleep with their exes while they're with the new partner or new source of supply. You'll see that sometimes um, these people have exes that absolutely hate their guts. And you're like, huh, I wonder why that person hates them so much. Um, the overts tend to be charming. They're the life of the party, but coverts can be almost painfully shy. Um, there's a few different types of narcissists. The grandiose narcissists, these are the you know leaders of corporations in the free world. These people tend to be very charismatic, outgoing. They are very overt. They don't have humility. Um, then, and they just love attention. But then they're the malignant grandiose narcissists and they want people to suffer so that they can get ahead. These are the people that will cheat, lie, steal, manipulate. They must win and they don't feel like they're winning unless you are losing. Then there's the stealth covert victim narcissist. These people can be shy. They can act like the victim. They internally blame the world or their partner for all their problems. Um, then there's the communal narcissist. These are the real sneaky kind because these are the do-gooders. They do it for appearances sake. They look like saints. They're doing good in the world, but they don't truly empathize with other people. They're all about performance um, and they don't really feel other people's pain. So the people they're helping, they're not in touch with those, those people's pain. Um, and this type actually does a lot of good in the world. You know, even on the whole, they actually usually do a lot of good, even though they're they're doing it for self-motivated reasons and for um, appearance. Um, they tend to stonewall in communication. They tend to not answer direct questions if they don't want to. They cannot be wrong. They cannot take any criticism. They often engage in withholding or silent treatment. They tend to withhold affection and compliments. Um, their children are extension of them. The kids are not separate beings. They don't see them as separate beings. It's just that they only have their kids. Their kids are there to make them look perfect. So they need to support and uphold that narcissistic mommy's image of perfection. Um, they can learn what an empathetic person might do, but and they can perform it. So they can perform empathy, but they do not feel empathy. So it's like they have cognitive empathy, but they don't have emotional empathy. Notice how these people are when a family member dies, when others die, animals die, if they're in a natural disaster, something happens. Notice if they have empathy for the people that died, for the people that they were supposed to care about that died. Notice how they react when a pet dies. I think this can be very telling about narcissists, both male and female, how they empathize or don't empathize or sympathize with massive loss or destruction or people that are have died that they were supposed to be close to. I think this is a really important sign to notice. They just don't seem to care. It's super odd. Um, yeah, they only help others if it's going to benefit them. They almost always have overlap in relationships. These are the people that are married three different times each time. They've secured a new source of supply. They leave their current spouse who they're bored of for their next spouse. There's always overlap. They're almost always cheating. And then they're like, I don't understand what the problem is. And then they always blame the spouse. Um, you know, he did something to make me cheat. That's what they do. Um, so narcissistic women often cheat or have emotional affairs. They use triangulation to create jealousy. They say that they have a lot of friends, but they're really people that they're schlepping. This makes them feel really wanted and powerful. They love it when two people, three people are fighting for them. They just absolutely love that. that. Now keep in mind that there's only a very small percentage of the population that actually has a true diagnosis of NPD. Um, According to most psychologists, they can't be cured, cured, but many people have narcissistic traits or qualities without being necessarily diagnosable, or they'll never go to a psychologist to get a diagnosis. Um, 
statistically more narcissists that actually have the diagnosis are men, but there are a lot of women, I think, that are highly narcissistic. And, you know, one thing um, to note is um, th th this person, do they have the ability to take personal responsibility for their actions? Are they able to apologize? And I don't mean an apology that's like, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way or I'm sorry things turned out the way they did. No, I mean like, I'm sorry, I lied to you, I cheated on you, I need to make amends for that, I apologize, what can I do to set it right, I was wrong, is there anything else you need to tell me that I did to hurt you? That is an amends, that's an apology. Not, I'm sorry that you feel that way, I'm, I'm sorry about how things turned out. Basically, you see how they're blame shifting. They're putting that, that on the victim. They tend to use a lot of projection, deflection. They Again, they cannot take any personal responsibility for their actions, their behaviors, for the harms they cause. They're always blame shifting. They're blaming the other person. So these are just some signs that you might be dealing with a female narcissist. Um, they're pretty similar to the male narcissist. Um, if they're the shy, vulnerable kind, they can really come across as really shy and sweet and even gentle and kind. Same with the male covert narcissist. They can come across that way too. They're the victim. Something bad happened to them. Um, so, you know, again, the thing to look at here too and remember that if you're in a relationship with one of these people, like you probably had trauma. You probably had a parent that was either a narcissist or an addict. And so somehow when you met this person, it felt familiar, it felt comfortable, and you weren't able to truly see the red flags. And, and of course the love bombing is very compelling and I understand that, especially if you're a codependent that already doesn't feel like you're good enough, then it can be very compelling to have somebody giving you all this attention and flattery and telling you that you're their soulmate and they've never had such amazing sex and blah, blah, blah but I would really caution you to take relationships very slow so that you can really get to know the person's character. Like, is this a person that has integrity? Are they honest? Um, are they, you know, do they have long-term friendships? And how deeply connected are those long-term friendships? Are they all shallow? Are they all surface? If you talk to this person's friends, does everyone say, well, I don't really know. I don't really know him. I don't really know her. Like that's, that's a sign. If, if they don't have any intimacy in any of their relationships, that is a huge sign. Um, or if their relationships are like three months long and they blow up and another three months and they blow up and that's just how their relationships are, you know, they, they, you know, best friends and then there's a blow up and they never talk to that person again that is a red flag like how are their relationships so now in my life what i really look at when i'm um, sort of dating somebody is like how are their friendships do they have long-term friendships are they surface and shallow or these deeply connected friendships are they you know, do they have these rich, nurturing, nurtured relationships with other people or are all their relationships sort of problematic? Um, that's just something to look at or all of them are shallow. And how are their relationships with, the, with their family? Are they very surface and shallow relationships where they're just sending this mask of perfection? You know, watch the Chris Watts case. You'll see that he had this really weird relationships with his family where he was sending a mask a perfection to, to meet up to his um, perfectionistic, probably narcissistic mother's um, standards of perfection, right? So he sent a mask to his whole own family. That's tip, very typical with narcissists because they learned that mask early on when they were little. They learned that they had to perform perfection in order to be accepted, or at least that's what they believe. So, you know, with these female narcissists, you know, you may be, you're dealing with somebody who's, you know, entitled, they're exploitative, and they have very low, if any, empathy, and they are going to use you. They're going to use you for money, for validation, for supply, for sex, to make them look good. They're going to suck you dry and really try to extract every bit that they can from you. Um, so again, if you're in a relationship with one of these people, man, it is you know, dangerous business. So um, I suggest you start considering an exit strategy. Um, I hope you're doing very well and thriving and practicing radical self-care. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.